here likes candy? Can I get a show of hands? Who here is afraid or was afraid of needles when they were young? Now imagine that I tell you that starting today, you have to really cut back on your candy and inject yourself not once, but up to five times a day. Oh, and keep the needle inside your body for about 10 seconds. This is the news that children with diabetes encounter. Roughly two years ago, my cousin's son, Tomas, who is seven years old, is diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. Tomas has two younger brothers, Agustin and Maxim. During his free time, Tomas likes hanging out with his friends, playing soccer, and building with Lego. In Mexico, where I'm from, Family is very important, so I am very close with my cousins. Tomás to me is like a younger cousin or even like my nephew. When the word gets around about his diagnosis, the entire family is shocked and overwhelmed. His parents, grandparents, even uncles and aunts are all trying to gather as much information as they can about this condition because it is now a part of everybody's daily life. From one day to another, Tomas has to cope with his fear of needles, inject himself around two to five times a day, and add and subtract in order to track his glucose. So I call my cousin Gabi, Tomas's mom, and I realize how much this is stealing from Tomas's childhood. In a way, diabetes is forcing Tomas to grow up. That's when I decide I want to design something for children with type 1 diabetes. Something fun, something they could look forward to, all while managing their condition. So what is type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes is a condition that's usually diagnosed in young children where your body does not produce insulin. Therefore, it cannot process glucose in the correct way. Living with this condition involves monitoring glucose levels, injecting insulin several times a day, as well as supervising your diet and your exercise. For anyone who's newly diagnosed, this is a lot of information. Now imagine for a seven-year-old. I'm focusing only on the insulin. Children with type 1 diabetes are insulin dependent. The administration of it is crucial for their survival. So what is Tommy? Tommy is an insulin kit for children with type 1 diabetes designed to facilitate the administration of insulin into the body. The set consists of two components, temporary tattoos that help the patient remember where they have already injected, and an insulin pen designed specifically for a child's hand. Both products are intuitive and playful, giving diabetic children the opportunity to have fun while managing their condition. My main goal here was to find the balance between a medical tool and a toy. So after doing extensive research, interviewing doctors, and observing patients, I identified three main problems. The importance of injection site rotation, the ergonomic factors of current insulin pens, and knowing when the full dose is administered. So the first problem, injection site rotation. When injecting insulin, it is crucial to rotate the injection site, but it's very hard to remember where you have already done so. The areas of injection are the arms, the legs, abdomen, and upper glute. On the left side of the slide, you can see a paper template that is what is currently used to help patients with this. These are not very efficient for several reasons. First of all, it's a two-dimensional object going on the body which is three-dimensional. So it doesn't really embrace the shape of the body. Second of all, they're kids. They move around, they get anxious. So it's very hard to keep the template in place. And lastly, once you remove the paper template, there's no indication whatsoever of where you have already injected. So I created a new concept. Temporary tattoos that visually indicate where you have previously injected. How do these work? Very simple. So the black ink stays on the body, and the color is what gets removed with an alcohol pad previous to each injection. 
This ensures that the patient disinfects prior to injecting. Many patients skip this step because it's an extra thing to do on top of everything they need to do. It's, in a way, it's kind of like when the dentist tells you you should floss every day, but you know it's not crucial and it's not going to kill you, so you just don't do it. So how do these work? They work just as regular temporary tattoos. You take off the plastic backing, you apply it with a damp cloth. Once the tattoo is on the body, you pinch in order to inject in the fat, not in the muscle, remove a colored dot, and you inject. You remove a colored dot and you inject. After roughly three days, depending on the patient's insulin dose, the tattoo will have no more color, indicating it's time to remove the tattoo, choose a new design, and move on to a new injection site. So the second and the third problem. These are the current insulin pens on the market. As you can see, they all look pretty similar. They're all designed for an adult's hand. Children have a hard time reaching the release dial at the top, and they don't have the coordination nor dexterity as developed to be able to inject and hold it in place. And lastly, there's no indication whatsoever of when the full dose is administered. So I designed a non-disposable insulin pen tailored specifically for a child's hand. Its overall length is shorter, making it easier for patients to hold it. It also has a handle that helps patients screw on fresh needles and it allows them to let go without the pen touching the ground. It is compatible with standard three milliliter insulin cartridges as well as standard pen needles. And lastly, to tackle the third and last problem, I solved it by covering the release dial in thermochromatic plastic. Thermochromatic plastic changes color with temperature. Therefore, it changes color when you touch it. This does a couple of things. So first of all, it motivates the patient to keep the needle inside their body longer, ensuring that the full dose is administered. Not only this, but it distracts the kid while the needle is inside their body. And most importantly, it gives them something to look forward to, increasing patient compliance. Lastly, I designed a carrying case to house both components. When I started sketching um, for the case, a lot of people were telling me, make it sleek, make it lightweight, portable, easy to carry. And then I realized all these people were adults. And I thought, honestly, as a kid, as long as it fits in your backpack and your mom approves, you're good to go. So, of course, I did consider the size and the shape of the case. But I gave a lot more importance to developing an emotional attachment to the product. I wanted it to be something that children with type 1 diabetes are proud of carrying around and showing off. So after making many prototypes, I sent some of my most refined ones to Mexico City. So Tomas himself could test them out. I decided not to tell them anything about how to hold the pen. I just asked my cousin to send back some pictures as soon as they had it. So when I got back the pictures, not only was I excited to see that they were holding the pen just as I had expected, but I got an even better surprise. This is Agus, Tomás's younger brother, who does not have type 1 diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> but my cousin told me that he really, really wanted a tattoo, so he faked and posed for the picture. That's when I knew I had met my goal. I had made it better for Tomás. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.